So I have these test pieces here that I'm going to start working on coming up with a method to do the slots for the watchmaker's lathe carriage. And the first thing that I'm doing, now these are just test pieces, um, but just for the sake of showing the process, um, I want to bring in some parallel surface. So I'm working with a stock edge here, um, which we'll look at the indicator here shortly. And this edge was saw cut, but I did mill it flat. Now one thing um, that we can see when you put it on the surface plate is this side here sits relatively flat. There's no, no visible rock. Um, this is the side that I milled. Um, it's just filed. The edges are filed. I didn't stone it. But it's it's very flat. Now when I flip it to the stock edge, there's an obvious wiggle. Uh, it's sort of hard to tell exactly where it's wiggling, but a lot of times with this type of steel, um, the stock edges aren't really square. So if I put it to an indicator, we can sort of see where it ends up. Um, you can see there it's a little bit high in the middle and then it drops down pretty significantly so it just has a bubble in the middle and then from side to side it's it's pretty far out of whack um, maybe four thousandths or so so my first goal here is to put this back into the machine and get both sides parallel so I know that the side opposite of this side, the stock side, is already flat. So I'm going to put it back in the vise and attempt to get this side sitting square with the back edge. So we'll, we'll do some indicating in the vise as well. I've got my indicator set up on the back side of this part here. And it's not too bad. If I run the indicator up, um, it stays basically within about a thousandths of an inch the whole way up. It's, it's bouncy because of the stock surface. But if I can keep the squareness even within two thousandths for this phase of the project, um, that's going to be adequate for what I'm doing. If I wanted to get it a little better, there's a couple things that I could do. Um, I could put some shim stock maybe back here. Um, there's a few methods that we could do. So now I have that square. So what I'll do is cut this top surface and then I'll take a measurement. I have left some area here and, and an area over here sticking out so that way I can actually get my calipers in there to measure after I take a cut and that would show me how parallel the bottom surface is to the top surface. So now I have the other side faced off um, there's still a little bit of stock over here, some stock surface. Um, but now, from end to end, we're probably about plus one on the one side and zero on the other. So it's it could use a little work on parallelism in this direction. Now here we're about zero, about plus two tenths, let's call it. And in the middle, plus four tenths and on the end about minus two tenths so all in all it's parallel within about six tenths which isn't too bad for for what I'm going for here um, I could put it back in and and try to get it a little better um, this is cold rolled steel so knowing the nature of cold rolled steel it tends to move around every time you look at it 
so I'm not going to fuss with it anymore. I'm, I'm fairly happy with, with where it is now. So the next phase is going to be to change out my jaws in the vise, uh, grab this lengthwise, and do some facing operations here to get that face cleaned up to start doing some grooving. Okay, here I have the fly cutter set up. I already have the height set and I took a skim cut across, but I'm going to take another uh, light pass here and see how we can do. Uh, it should be about five thousandths. See how it handles it. So it looks like I'll have to take a few more passes there to get that surface to clean up. Surface finish came out really nice though. I faced the first side of this plate and now I have to face the other side parallel. So I have to verify the setup and since I can't get an indicator underneath um, the part to indicate uh, in this direction, in the X direction, um, I used some parallel clamps, some toolmaker clamps, and I clamped a parallel underneath on both sides to project across what that underneath surface will read. So then as I run my indicator along this surface, there's a bit of a glare.